Welcome back. This week is module two, which is focused on developing an actionable career plan. And I have to say, when we were developing the content for this, our biggest thought was, how can we translate that piece of paper that some postdocs write at the beginning of their postdoc and then put in their desk and put away into something that they can use? And now, you know, I think not only is that more important um, in the post-COVID-19 universe, um, and, but because the landscape has totally changed, but it's also really abstract and amorphous to kind of figure out if you are in a postdoc transitioning into the job market, how will that job market grow and change um, and be something that um, ultimately you can find a job that you're really interested in. The goal of this part of the conversation is just, just to get a sense from my colleagues here as to how you all are thinking about career planning in the context of, of what you're currently experiencing. The academic job market for biological anthropologists who study primates is never great. Um, and I suspect that the, the result of this pandemic will be that it contracts even more. Um, so I've been spending a lot of time um, thinking about other ways that I can leverage my skills beyond academia. And this is something that I've been sort of thinking about throughout my postdoc. But, you know, one nice thing about everything being um, online now is that there are so many talks and workshops and things that I would have never been able to participate in that now I can like zoom into a group of people talking about science policy in India or like there, there are a whole lot of things that are now available, many resources. But the other thing that I'm trying to remind myself is that we're making decisions with the information that we have at the time and it's always going to be incomplete and you're just doing the best with what you currently have available to you and so it feels strange to be thinking in terms of like five years from now when I really couldn't tell you what two weeks from now will look like, but I'm trying to make my plans given the best information that I have available to me and sort of assuming that I'm doing, I'm not making bad decisions. I'm just making decisions based on what I currently know. Yeah, I think for me, one of the, um, it hasn't really changed, but it's sort of something that I, that I like to do. And I think now more than ever, it's, I've been more, trying to be more intentional about it is, about every three months I check in with my supervisors and we have not just like day-to-day -day talks about the work that I'm doing, but we have big picture talks about what are the things that, you know, I am thinking about in terms of career and where it is that I think that I'm going. And it's, um, I'm trying to get ahead on while we are, you know, sort of stuck indoors. Most of my work is usually revolving around writing papers and sort of reading and, you know, thinking about policy. Um, but there are these, these conversations that I have with my supervisors on a somewhat recurring basis around every three months, sort of more on a big picture scale of, okay, what are we thinking about in terms of career and how do we get there? Um, just so that I can keep having that intentionality um, and that clear plan with, with action items um, and someone to bounce ideas off. I'm curious, one of the activities in this module focuses on setting goals. And I think the advice that we give is around, you know, have a few short term goals and then set something in the longer term. But how are you wrapping your head around goal setting right now? That's a tough question. <laughs> it is. It just seems like everything changes daily. And so for me, I'm just try to keep the same pace as I had before, which is I still have the, the same goal and I'm still checking to make sure that's still happening. And am I doing the things that I want to make sure that the goal for this year is achieved or the goal that I have for six months? It's changed because it's like you're not in lab. So it's like, how can I, when I project forward next month, hopefully, uh, what, would I, what would lab look like? So I think my goals have changed to become shorter goals, but I think they feed into the long-term objective of you know, still becoming an independent scientist and um, um, making the necessary steps to do that. For me, my timeline has shifted a bit and I'm grateful for the flexibility in my position um, where, you know, if I don't find a job right away, I can still be employed. Um, and it's also made me think about, um, you know, different plan B, plan C, which I've always kind of kept in the back of my mind, but I've been trying to think about, okay, well, with my skills, how can I contribute to what the post-pandemic world might look like um, and still accomplish my goals. 
I've been trying to think beyond just like a goal for a job title um, and more about kind of the skills that I want to develop. Erin, that's a, that's a really good point. And I think that's really important for, you know, the, the, the postdoc community to realize too, is that you can really break down those goals into very actionable items, specifically focusing in your case, like with skills. So to be able to identify, okay, what career options are out there? That's always a challenge, right? There's so many resources. There's with a PhD, there's so much flexibility to be able to go into a career of your choice. And sometimes that paralysis by analysis of so many options can seem daunting, but the best way to kind of break that down, especially in a time like this, is to make some small goals that you can work towards because it does provide a little sense of normalcy when you're able to go towards that. Um, you know, for me specifically in my case, I'm, I'm expecting my first child any day now. So I'm in a, situ I'm in a situation where um, for me, yes, it'd be great to wrap up that paper that's currently, you know, in revision, you know, is, is ready to hopefully push back to the journal as quickly as possible or try and wrap up a couple other drafts of papers because those are, in my mind, relatively actionable and quick. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not going to beat myself up if I don't finish it. And I think that's also okay to have to, to realize that if you don't meet that goal in that timeline, as Olivia said, it's okay to shift that timeline a little. Um, and, and it's okay to be realistic. You know, that's, that's another part of your SMART goals, right? It has to be realistic, but you, you have to give yourself some, some flexibility and that's okay. And I just want to say, I mean, I'm really pleased to hear that, that you all have flexibility and um, support. And that's so, it's music to my ears. Um, for those postdocs that are watching that are nervous, maybe their appointment is ending and they don't know where that funding will be. Um, and they have a plan B and C and D and E, but it feels really stressful. Um, please do ask for help, whether it's offices like mine, um, which are focused specifically on postdocs or a department administrator. Institutions will have to be nimble um, to come up with all sorts of things that we um, you know, never thought that we would before. And I can certainly speak on behalf of, of Boston University and say that we are trying to be really creative. Um, and we recognize that we have to step up to support our early career researchers and I think many other institutions are feeling the same way. So find help um, if, if you are feeling stressed and anxious about the job market.